The notable actions with both ship hardware and Stage Zero's infrastructure immediately after Flight 3 have many excited for the upcoming Flight 4. And what everyone needs right now is a specific Starship launch schedule. In fact, SpaceX has revealed changes in its rocket launch plans, but everything doesn't solely rest on their side because to have a legal launch, they still need approval from the FAA. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. How will SpaceX execute Starship's new launch schedule, and what does the company need to quickly meet those FAA requirements? During this time, the Starship and Super Heavy Booster are quite busy at the production site. Although there hasn't been an official announcement from SpaceX regarding any changes to the pair for Flight 4, we are still excited and looking forward to it because SpaceX and Elon Musk are sure not to disappoint us. After each launch, SpaceX brings about hundreds, if not thousands, of changes to the Starship rocket. On the other hand, the Starship launch support infrastructure is also diligently repaired and upgraded by SpaceX engineers. Overall, SpaceX's launch preparations are progressing smoothly and carefully, awaiting the potential launch in May. So, what will the schedule of the upcoming Starship launch look like? First, let's review the objectives of Starship Flight 4. In the upcoming flight of Starship, SpaceX will primarily aim to improve vehicle landing. 1. Controlling engine burn and booster landing. 2. Securing heat shield tiles and three, eliminating roll issues on Starship re-entry. For objectives two and three, we can see they will not significantly alter the schedule of Starship launch compared to previous flights. However, for objective number one, which is controlling engine burn and booster landing, that'll be a factor that completely changes the flight profile for this fourth Starship launch. The key point of this launch is the planned location and timing of the Starship landing. The first two Starship test flights were designed by the company to last 90 minutes and then return to Earth with a single return orbit and descent off the coast of Hawaii. However, everything happened faster on Flight 3. The upper stage of the Starship was set to fall to a new location in the Indian Ocean about 60 minutes after liftoff. The fourth flight is predicted to have a similar flight time to the third flight, with the potential landing location still being the Indian Ocean for the Starship in the Gulf of Mexico, miles away from Boca Chica Beach for the Super Heavy. To be honest, we cannot be 100% sure about this because it also depends on SpaceX's efficiency plan, but there are two things we can know in advance. The first focus is on the booster landing process in the Gulf of Mexico, where they'll attempt a gentle landing on a virtual tower, according to Elon Musk. This means they'll conduct a normal flight like IFT-3, flying the spacecraft to the Indian Ocean to undergo the hot stage separation. After separation, they'll send the booster to the Gulf of Mexico, placing it vertically in the Gulf similar to what they do with a launch tower on land, perhaps even creating a virtual tower. They might use some ARVR setup to precisely know what will happen. Or, in a simpler way, SpaceX may choose specific GPS coordinates in the Gulf or Indian Ocean, depending on whether they decide to land both or just one of the vehicles. Instructions will be programmed to virtually land the vehicles at those specific GPS coordinates. If they hit the GPS target, Elon stated that SpaceX would attempt to catch the booster on IFT-5. Essentially, they'll mimic and extend the booster landing sequence from Booster 9. The only major issue I see is igniting the engines properly to achieve a soft water landing. I'm not sure what they'll do at that point, but hopefully they truly understand the booster landing mechanism because regardless, they haven't had a single approach to the successful landing phase. The second aspect is the involvement of the FAA directly impacting the launch schedule and mission. Everything before SpaceX launches this rocket will be scrutinized. The FAA may conduct thorough reviews of the launch vehicle and launch procedures to ensure they meet safety standards as usual. This may involve inspections, simulations, and analyses of potential new risks for Flight 4 and 5 as they continue their trajectory. If SpaceX alters that trajectory, the FAA may assess the flight path to ensure minimal risk to populated areas and debris. What could happen if debris appears within the blast radius? What does that blast radius look like? What would the debris look like? And where would it end up in the ocean? Essentially, FTS functions as a fail-safe mechanism that triggers rocket detonation in case of emergency. SpaceX has demonstrated its effectiveness after the mishap with IF-1, where it failed and everything spiraled out of control. Now they know what they're doing. They're collaborating with SpaceX on this, and SpaceX is addressing these critical safety issues. Elon and the team are handling the errors that the FAA may want to confirm are absent. If anything happens, in terms of public safety, Elon and the company will face failures, possibly for many months, even one or two years, depending on the severity of the public safety incident. However, in reality, I think these procedures will be very quick for the fourth flight, because for the second and third flights, SpaceX has successfully operated the FTS smoothly. Especially in Flight 3, Starship completed 80% of the objectives beyond the reusable portion. If the FAA's purpose is to protect the public, 
I don't think that's an issue on this flight, but they're requesting another accident investigation. SpaceX will respond as quickly as possible. they got to convince the FAA that both Starship and Super Heavy are safe by providing results of the incident report, describing the investigation results, and how SpaceX plans to address each issue. Hopefully that licensing process gets done quickly. It won't be long before we have a satisfactory answer from the FAA. Why? Because the positive outcomes after the Starship launch have shown that the investigation process may also be easier than in the past. We didn't see anything major. We don't think there's any critical systems for safety that were implicated, the FAA's Kevin Coleman said at Payload Space Capital event. Usually, if there's not any critical systems for safety implicated, the mishap investigation can be pretty clean and it can move pretty quickly. Furthermore, the FAA has also expressed its intention to simplify the approval process for Starship launches. We're trying to work with them to get them on a different program, if you will, in terms of how we approve their launches going forward, Coleman said. We want to get away from the launch-by-launch -launch approvals and get more into what Part 450 was really designed for, which is an approval of a portfolio of launches. No doubt anymore, the most potential time frame for Starship's fourth flight is finally the early next month, as tweeted by Elon Musk, which also coincides with another reliable milestone from SpaceX's COO Gwen Shotwell. She shared that with the hardware updates and less cumbersome regulations, the company hopes the turnaround time will be faster and is aiming for IFT4 after six weeks. Well, SpaceX has progressed significantly. It must be said that few rocket companies persevere as consistently when facing explosions that others often see as failures like that. But even if it is a failure, for SpaceX in particular, it was the company's keystone strategy for the last 20 years, learning from iterating quickly on failures until you can repeat success. That strategy has worked magnificently. Remember, back in 2008, SpaceX was just a fledgling company. Its first three launch attempts from 06 to 08 of its rocket Falcon 1 were all failures. No private company has ever successfully launched a rocket before. But the lessons from those failures enabled by SpaceX's team to successfully launch the Falcon 1 on the fourth try, and 16 years later, SpaceX's Falcons are the most launched American rockets in history. Hundreds of consecutive successes. The Falcon 9 full thrust has been launched 309 times. No failures. Zero. If you knew the story, wouldn't you think that the inaugural Starship launch was an unmitigated disaster because it didn't function perfectly right away? As we saw in Flight 3, 11 months after that failed first launch, Starship made it to space at orbital speed. Stage separation has been successful twice now. SpaceX tested the opening of Starship's cargo doors and has laid the groundwork for in-orbit fuel transfers, which are important for those deep space missions. The Super Heavy booster re-entered the atmosphere before an RUD 1,500 feet over the Gulf of Mexico. The Starship connected to SpaceX's own satellite internet work while it was hurtling violently around the Earth so that it could livestream its flight through a plasma field to millions of viewers. Unreal. RUDs and all, the third launch of Starship, just one of seven planned launches for 2024, is the most exciting moment for American space in years. Consider, it's the largest rocket system ever built. It'll land Americans back on the moon for the first time in half a century as part of NASA's Artemis program. It has the power to take us to Mars and beyond. It can cement American dominance in the 21st century space race. And it just made it to space for the first time. So don't let any sour punditry confuse you. What happened in Texas is a man-made miracle. Emphasis on man-made. Because it took men and women of SpaceX 20 years to build a sustainable company that could pull something like that off. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.